Okay. Blue. I think it was blue. All right. Uh, lesson 45. Uh, conditional permutations. The, remember the idea behind uh, permutation. Uh, conditional permutations. The idea of a permutation is that it's uh, n things taken r at a time. All right, remember a couple of lessons ago we learned this notation. If you've got, you know, say you have uh, 10 letters and you, you know, how many five letter signs can you make with these 10 letters? Uh, if, uh, and with no repetition, that's, that's the idea here. Uh, well, uh, conditional permutations are, it's the same idea. You know, how, many different common, how many different ways can we put these things together, uh, except there, there's going to be certain conditions for it. Uh, <clears throat> Some people might consider this a downside. Uh, the, so I'll say the downside is that there really isn't a, a formula that you can use. You just kind of have to use your logic and common sense to, fig to figure it out. <clears throat> now, uh, let's, let's walk through a few examples here. We're still going to use the, the uh, procedure of writing some boxes and filling in boxes and then multiplying to get our answer. Is it focused? Um, it's... That, that's better. So we're still going to need to use the idea of boxes and writing numbers in that. We just have to be careful about how we do that. All right, so 45.1. Okay, how many odd counting numbers? So we're looking for odd uh, counting numbers. Uh, can, uh, can we form uh, using the digits 3, 4, and 5? and no repetition. All right, so we're talking about odd counting numbers. We've got three digits to work with, no repetition. Uh, do you, uh, wait, does it say, well, let's just say this. Uh, when we're talking about counting numbers, we, if we have a one digit number, how many possibilities do we have? No, we only using a three, a four, five. How many possibilities do we have? Two. We have two. Because we could have a three or we could have a five. So we're talking about one digit numbers that are odd. We could have a three or a five, and so we have a total of two possibilities. All right, what about two digit num counting numbers? Four. Uh, three. Box a little bit bigger. Uh, now, for a two-digit number to be odd, we oh, could have the three here. Six. Yeah. In which case, uh, so if, if we put the three here, how many options do we have for the, the tenth place? Three, three. Two. Oh, no repetition. Two. We have two options. If we choose, if for the one option of having a, of putting a three here, if we put a three there as the one option for this spot then we have two options over here. Could be a four or a five. How many, how many options does that give us? Two. two. Two times one. All right, now what if, in order to be an odd number, the, one, the one's place has to be an odd. So the, our option, these are our options. Okay, we tried with the three. Four is not odd, so we can't use that one in the one's place at all. If we put the five here, that's one option. How many options do we have for the tenth place? Two. Two. So that's going to give us another two options. All right. What about? A but we have three digits to work with, so we might have a three-digit counting number. For it to be odd, the ones place has to be odd. What if we put a three here? That's one possibility. Uh, for for the other two numbers, the four and the five, does it matter? Or is, it, is it going to matter which one goes where? No. No. So we have two possibilities and one. Uh, so we, we have two possibilities for one of these places, and whichever one we don't use here, we have to put the other one here. Yes. And we have the same we have the same scenario if we put a five in the ones place. The one option of putting a five there leaves the other two numbers. Doesn't matter which where they go. 
So this gives us two options, and this gives us two options. And then we, can, then we just add these all up, two, four, six, eight, ten, and a total of ten possibilities. Is that the formula? No, there really isn't the formula. So the, these ones you just have to think it through. <clears throat> Uh, 45.2. And, and notice it's helpful to write down your criteria on your work so that you can show some work so that you yourself or someone creating your paper or me as a teacher can come along and, and try to figure out what you were thinking. Alright, so 45.2. Find, as I'm looking for the number of odd three digit counting numbers. So it needs to be odd, it needs to be three digits that are less than 600. So these are the criteria. And it doesn't say anything about not repeating digits, so all the digits are fair game. But it does say it has to be three digits long. It has to be three digits long, so we're only gonna have, we're not gonna have any boxes with you know, uh, two box things, or one box things. We're gonna talk about three boxes. Now, less than 600, uh, how many options do we have for the hundreds place? Seven. No, we No, we five, six, seven. Six. Nine. Eight. No. No. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, it's odd. Well, odd. Oh, it's This is going to affect this one. So we have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, five, because we can use six. That's right. Because if it has to be less than 600, we can't use a 6. So we can use a 5, we can do 4, 3, 2, 1. Can we use a 0? No, because then it would not be 3 digits. So there are 5 options for the hundreds place. Right? Now, it does need to be odd, so how many options do we have here? 5. The odd digits, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. How many options do we have here? Ten. Ten. Oh. Zero through nine. All right, there are ten digits. Zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, so you're not to use ten in the box. Oh, like a two-digit number in the box. No, it's zero, one, two. What number, what digits could we put in this box? Could we, could we put a nine there? How about an eight? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Yeah. How many numbers did I write? No, I'm saying what? So we're allowed to put a ten in the box. No, the idea behind the box is that the number in the box here tells us how many options. Okay. So there are five options for uh, what we could put in this box. There are ten options. These are the ten options for what we could put in this box. And there are five options for this box. So then we, so then we just multiply. Five times ten times five. Okay. <clears throat> 45.3. We have five math books and four English books. permutations are possible if the math books must be kept together and the English books must be kept together. So these five have to have to be together and these four have to be together. Well we have a total of nine books, right? have to be together, and all the English books have to be together, I can't mix them. What if I put the English books first? Or the other ones, what if I do the math books first? If I do the math books first, I've got five options, and then four, 
three, two, one. And then the English books would be four, three, two, one. So five times four times three times two times one divided four million to ten. What does that come out to? The book says twenty-eight. Is this is so. Is that my answer? No, it's five thousand. No. Because it doesn't say which set of books has to be first. It just says that these need to get together and these need to be together. If we put the math books, if we put the math books first and then the English books first, then the math together and English together. But what if we we could have put the English ones first and the math ones second? And so that that would give us. And if we if we flipped if we put the English first and the math second, uh, it would be. Four three you know four times four three two one times five four three two one and we would end up with the same number. So I'm just going to multiply that by two and that will get me my five seven sixty. Be a one, three, five, seven, or nine. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's see which, which direction you approach here. Uh, now it has to be four digits. How many options do we have for here? But ignore this for just a second. How many options do we have for here? For this number to be odd, oh, okay. this has to be an odd digit. But how many options do we have for here? Nine? Yes. Why do you say nine? Why why is it not ten? Yeah, because it, yes, because if you put the zero here, then it's not four digits. Okay, so because of this this, then the, you know, there are nine options here. However, if we don't have repetition and then there's, uh, oh, there could be up to five things here, but once you, once we use one of these digits, there's only going to be eight left to go here. Uh, so this one has to be not zero. This one has to be one, three, five, seven, or nine. All right. What about the? Are there any any restrictions on these? Yeah. What? Yeah. Um, it can be one of. First. Yes, what did you say? Non-repetition. Yeah, so other than just not repeating a digit, there's no other restriction on these two places. So if we've used, if there are, ten, there are 10 digits total, we've used one of them here, and used one of them here, that leaves how many options left? Seven, eight, eight, and seven. If there are 10 digits, we use one of them to make sure that the that it's odd, that the number's odd. Yeah. I have, yeah, yeah. I have nine digits. I, I already used one for the first number here, uh -huh. another one here. Uh huh. So I have seven. Because, but the second one. There seven. are there there oh, exist ten zero. digits. Right, right. Yeah. There exist ten digits. We use one. We we use one of the odd ones right, right, to go right. here. That leaves us nine left. Uh, we did not use a zero here, but we can't use a zero here. Mm -hmm. So of the remaining nine, we can't use a zero here. Okay. So we use a digit there. But then we can't use a zero in either of these places, so we're now we're back to the full eight. And then once we use that one, then there's seven left after that. <clears throat> and so then whatever eight times eight times seven times five comes up to. And the book says 22 four. One more example. Where's 
we're talking about five. We have an elf, a gnome, a, an elf, a gnome, a fairy, a pixie, and a leprechaun. And they're going to sit in a line. How many are there? Five. Right, so they're going to sit in a line. So that means there are five chairs in a row. And how many different ways can they sit? If the elf and the gnome have to sit next to each other. Elf. Elf and gnome have to sit next to each other. Maybe they're dating or something. All right, well. If we put the elf here and the gnome here, how many options do we have left for here? And then two and then one. But what if the, and that gives us six options. What if the, what if it's the elf and the gnome this way? Is that a different combination? Yes. Or a different permutation? Yes. yes. And then three, two, one. There's another six possibilities. And so, and then we could do the same thing, elf, gnome, gnome, elf. We could do it in these two spots. So this one's, you know, three, two, one. This is going to give us another six and another six. And we can do the same thing here. Elf, elf, gnome, gnome, elf here. And elf, gnome, gnome, elf down here. Another six, 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 and six. And so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six, eight, uh, eight sixes. So it's a total of 48 possibilities. So like I said, to, to recap, the... There really is no formula. You just have, you have to read the problem, make a note of whatever whatever the restrictions or the conditions are, because right? these are conditional, uh, and based on that, draw you know whatever your whatever your boxes are for your possibilities. And most of the time, well, maybe I don't know about most. Maybe half the time, you will only have one set of boxes. You just have to be careful about what where you what numbers you put there. Uh, but a lot of times, you also might have multiple boxes, or your multiple sets of boxes that you need to add up with all the possibilities. So you, have, so you just have to read those problems carefully. And that is conditional permutations.